Hey everyone, welcome to part 94 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll improve the battles so that it will show different backgrounds based on from where we started the battle. So if we start the battle from water, it will show this background. And if we start the battle from grass, it will show this background. And then we'll also improve our custom edit script so that it will check for both the wild pokemons in grass and the wild pokemons in water okay so let's look at how to implement all this by the way i started a new series on patreon that covers how to make a 3d pokemon game like pokemon legend Arceus in unity so if you're interested in making a 3d pokemon game or a 3d rpg game in general then you can check out this course on patreon so by becoming a patreon you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, let's look at how to change the battle background. So, if we go inside the Essential Objects prefab and if we enable the Battle System, here inside the Battle Canvas, we have the background image of the battle. Okay, so we have to change the source of this image dynamically from the code based on from where the battle started. Right, so first we need to get a reference to the background image from the battle system script. So let me go ahead and add that. So here, I'll create a new serialized field variable for the background image. Okay. And next, we need references to the grass background image and the water background image. Okay. So in the art folder, Inside battle, we have a sprite sheet with multiple battle backgrounds. So this is the image I want to use for the battle background. So let me actually crop this image a little bit so that we can remove its border. Okay. So let me crop it from all the sides. And we can actually check the size of our grass background. So this is 251 by 140. So we can set that same value for the water background. So I'll set the width to 251 and height to 140. Okay. And let me move it down a little. So that looks good. So let me go ahead and hit apply. So now from the battle system script, we need a reference to both the grass background and the water background so that we can set them from the code when the battle starts all right so in the battle system script i'll create two new sprites so the first one i'll call grass background okay and i'll call the second one water background so now we can set one of these sprites to our background image based on from where the battle started. Okay, so first we need to know from where the battle started. So we can check that by using the battle trigger enum. So we just have to pass it when calling the start battle function. Right, so in the start battle function of the battle system, I'll also create a parameter for the battle trigger. Okay, and let me give it a default value so that it is not compulsory. I'll set it to long grass by default. All right, and we also need to add this in the start trainer battle function in case we need to change the backgrounds in the trainer battle. Okay, so next, let me store the battle trigger in a private variable so that we can use it outside the start battle function okay so i'll create a private variable here called 
battle trigger all right and i'll assign it from the start battle and the start trainer battle functions all right so next based on the value of the battle trigger we can set the sprite of our background image okay so from the setup battle function if the battle trigger is equal to long grass then we'll use the grass background and otherwise we'll use the water background okay so let me set this into the sprite of our background image okay so based on the battle trigger we'll set different sprites to the background image so now let's go to unity and assign these sprites in the battle system and test okay and by the way i like to have a little bit of segregation here so that the background sprites doesn't end up inside the audio so let me go ahead and add a header called background images over here okay so that looks much better so next let me go ahead and assign all these so to the background image i'll assign the background image object okay and next to the grass background let me go ahead and assign the grass background sprite so this is the grass background sprite that we want to use it's called battle background 5 okay so let me go ahead and assign that and next in the water background let me go ahead and assign this one so this is battle background 7 okay and by the way before we test we have to actually pass the battle trigger into the start battle function while calling it so here let me pass the battle trigger as the third parameter okay so now we can go ahead and test and see if it's working so let me just go ahead and disable the battle system so that it's not enabled by default and let me go ahead and test the game okay so if i start a battle from the water then i should get the water background okay so yeah that's working we are getting the water background when we start a battle from the water so let me go ahead and start a battle from the grass also and check if we are getting the grass background so yeah when we start a battle from the grass we are getting the grass background okay so that's working fine now we are setting the battle backgrounds dynamically so next i want to add some additional validations in the map area script so right now we only have validation for the wild pokemons in the grass so here if i change the chance percentage to 20 the total will be 90 and here we'll get an error saying that the total chance percentage is not 100 okay so let me just change it back so we have validation for the wild pokemons in the grass but for the wild pokemons in the water we don't have any validation right so here the total chance percentage is 90 right now but we are not getting any error so let's go ahead and add validations for that so i'll open up the map area script and here in the on validate function we are already calculating the total chance percentage in the water right so you're already calculating it but we should actually show the error from the map area edit the script right so let me open the map area edit the script and in here we also need to show the error message for the water pokemons also so first i'll actually rename this variable to 
total chance in grass and for the message I'll say the total chance percentage of Pokemon in grass is not 100 all right and next I'll do the same thing for the total chance in water so first we have to get the value of this variable okay so I'll just duplicate this and I'll get the total chance in water and I'll also change the name of the variable to total chance in water okay and then let me just copy paste this code and I'll check if total chance in water is not equal to 100 if so I'll show an error message saying that the total chance percentage of Pokemon in water is not 100 okay and by the way we don't need to show this label anymore just showing the error message should be good enough so let me get rid of this label okay and if you want you can show the actual value in the error message itself okay so let me add a dollar sign at the start of the string so that we can append variables in it okay and here let me append the total chance in grass okay so now the error will say the total chance of Pokemon in grass is this value and not 100 okay so let me also do that for the error message of the total chance in water all right so now let's check the editor and see if the validation is working okay looks like we have an error over here so it's because in here for the variable name I'm passing total chance in water okay but in the map area script as you can see that the name is total chance water so let me just change that and now hopefully it should work okay so let me just clear the errors and if I change the chance percentage to 90 then you can see that it shows the error saying that the total chance percentage of Pokemon in water is 90 and not 100 okay so next let's also make sure that it's working for the Pokemon in the grass so yeah now we have two different errors one for the Pokemon in the grass and the other for the Pokemon in the water okay so yeah the validation is working fine so let me just change these values so that the total is 100 and now we should not have any errors so yeah the validation is working fine now but there is one more thing I want to improve so the thing is in some scenes we might not have any water and in some scenes we might not have any grass so for example in the root one scene we don't have any water right we only have grass so in that case the wild pokemons and water list will be empty right we won't have any values in this list so in such cases we don't want to show this error message saying that the total chance percentage is zero and not 100 okay we only want to show the error message if there are any entries in this list okay so if there is nothing in the list we should not show this error because there will be lots of scenes that doesn't have water or grass so showing errors in those cases will be annoying to the designer so what we can do is from the map area script we can set the value of the total chance to minus one if there are no pokemons in the list okay so what I'll do is at the start of the on validate function I'll set the total chance and the total chance in water to minus one okay and I'll only run this code if there are any entries in the wild pokemons list okay so above this I'll add an if condition 
and I'll check if file Pokemon start count is greater than zero and only then I'll execute this code so if this code is not executed then the value of the total chance will remain as minus one okay so let me go ahead and do the same for the total chance in water so here I'll check if the count of wild Pokemon in water is greater than zero okay and only then I'll run this code all right so now if any of these lists are empty then their total chance will be negative one right so from the map area edit the script we can add another condition here and we can check if the value is not negative one okay this should be not equal to all right so if the total chance is negative one then that means there are no entries in the list and in that case we should not show the error okay so let me also add this condition for the total chance in water all right so now let's go ahead and test this so now you can see that we don't have any errors when the wild pokemons in water list doesn't have any entries right but if i add an entry over here then we'll get this error okay so that is much better than showing the error always all right so next before i stop the video i want to fix a bug that we have right now so right now we are doing the chance percentage calculation from the on validate function right but the issue is the on validate function will only be called when we are starting the game from the editor okay when we take a build of the game and when we start the game from the build this function will not be called so to fix this we have to run this code from the start function also okay so let me go ahead and put this code in a new function i'll call this function calculate chance percentage okay and i'll copy all the code in here and by the way let me fix the spelling of percentage okay so now we can call this function from both on validate and from start okay so let me go ahead and call it from both functions and now that issue should be fixed all right so i'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video